30 seconds to gravitational reversal. All massive objects should be secured already, but stay clear just in case. Arboretum is confirmed clear. Prepare to cut all acceleration on my mark. Ready. Gravitational reversal imminent. Mark. I just lost 20 kilos. Fastest diet ever. Just in time, because at your old weight you'd have hit the ceiling pretty hard. Okay, fire up side engine A. Five minute burn. Let's get spinning. Engine start confirmed. I hope they don't make us clean up the mess we're making. Astronomy section. I'm going to need a precise reading on the distance to Peter's ship before we can start the deceleration burn. To the centimeter, please. I'm on it, Chief. Distance to the nanometer won't solve the problem of counteracting his last-minute gravitational acceleration. I've got a couple of ideas there. Let's hope they're as good as I think they are. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 10, Rescue. How are you feeling? You're always asking that. I always want to know. I think you've got a pretty good idea. Scared. It helps to say it. Not really. Can you see us yet, Dad? Yeah, Annika, you're going pretty fast. We're decelerating hard for you. We won't overshoot. Going to have to turn you over to Chief Flint soon. If I never see you again, I love you, Tam. Love you, Annika. Love you, Judy. We love you, too. Cutting in a ring, bringing us down to one engine. And now, zeroing out acceleration. Gravitational capture imminent. Velocity relative to Peters. Four meters a second towards him. Gravitational capture confirmed. I'm reading acceleration in your direction. Okay, let's cancel out that velocity quick. Five second single engine burst. Velocity 15 centimeters a second. Good enough for now. I'm reading an altitude of 29 kilometers. My math says that gives us 40 minutes until impact. Impact velocity? Trust me, you don't want to know. But we have plans to fix that. Let's go over the options with you now. Okay, rescue team. Do you understand your mission? The mayor already told us everything, yes. Let's go over it again. Suit up. Stay in the airlock. Be ready to rush to where Peter's crash is. Pray we can get to him with the spare suit in time if he's got an air leak. Okay, sounds good. Carry on. Yes, sir. We've routed our operations around the thing for now. But what do you want us to do with it? Could you remove it? Bring it up here? Sure. Of course, we'd have to cut some connections. That's a terrible idea. We need to leave it where it is and keep it operating normally until we understand everything. I think we should treat it as a security threat. It's transmitting somewhere. We don't know if the intentions are friendly, so we should focus on disabling it. No! You can't do that! Why not, Amadi? It, it's a priceless archaeological treasure! We can't risk damaging it! We should at least cut off the antenna. That should make sure it stops giving away our location and any other details to a potential hostile power far more advanced than we are. No! Why? What if it makes the whole thing shut down? What if it triggers a self-destruct? 
There's no reason to expect that. What about the way it reacted when I touched it? Just a buildup of charge over millennia. You're talking like it was an intelligence reacting to you. That's exactly what I think it was. I've touched it. It didn't react to me. So have I, once we made sure it was safe. My decision is final. You don't outrank me. Well, I'll leave you two detectives to sort this out between yourselves. I guess for now, things stay as they are. Velocity? He's coming down at 42 meters a second now. Fire the ring two engines. Five second burst. Engine 17 didn't light. 19 is running at 90%. Compensating. They weren't designed for all this on and off brief thrusting. They were designed to run constantly. Did we zero out the velocity? Missed it by five meters a second. Not good enough. That happens at impact and I'm dead. We'll have to go with plan B. Are you ready, boss? Ready as I'll ever be. Rescue team, are you in position? Let's test. Direct your air vent towards air. us. Try to zero out your velocity with an air release. Stand by with that suit. The odds will need you just went up. Okay. Here goes. Did it work? Yep, he just hit zero. Hovered there nicely for a few seconds. Gravity is taking over again now. Used a bit more air than I was expecting, though. Use it all if you need to. Direct the air releases to make sure you land as close to the base as you can so our team can get to you quickly. I seem to recall this strategy not going well for you a couple decades ago. A massive ship like that is actually a lot easier to keep control of. And your release valves are steadier than my air hose was. You can do this. Projected landing time, one minute. How close is he coming down? Looks like only a few hundred meters from airlock A. Perfect. Mayor, maybe you should send the team out now. Doctor, move your team outside and hold position. You should see him coming down. Altitude 40 meters, velocity 2 meters a second. Firing one second burst to cancel as much of that as I can for you. Velocity 0.7 meters a second. I've deployed the landing legs. Use your air the rest of the way, boss. Altitude 28 meters, velocity 1 meter a second. I'd wait until 10 meters or a velocity over 5 meters a second. I don't need a backseat driver right now. 15 meters. Starting an air release now. His descent is slowing. Looks good from here. I think you're going to make it. Touchdown. Yes. Oh, that was as soft a landing as I've ever felt, if I may say so myself. Rescue team, go! Already on our way. We'll get to him in a couple minutes. How's your air gauge, boss? On nil. Just the cabin air left. I should be fine with that for an hour or so. Not enough time to tow your ship into the hangar. Peters, you're going to have to open the hatch for the rescue team when they knock. You realize I have no airlock? We realize. I'm not going to tell you this will be fun, Peters. Oh no, why, why didn't... Well, actually, I can see why you didn't warn me earlier. I wouldn't have been able to think about anything else. You'll only hurt for 9 to 12 seconds, then you'll be out cold. But how will you get me inside in time? We're bringing a spare suit we'll put you into. Won't take a minute. Better not. Take your shoes off so we don't have any trouble getting your feet in. And be sure to grab onto something when you open the hatch so you don't get swept out. Above all, remember, don't hold your breath. The pressure difference from holding your breath will make your lungs rupture. As long as you don't do that, we've got about 90 seconds to get you into the suit before the vacuum does any real damage. Are you sure I'll fit in the suit? Did you account for swelling? It's oversized. Don't worry, I accounted for that. We are right outside the hatch now. Hernandez, move to the side if you don't want to get caught in the wind. Sorry, Doctor. Move! Let's get in there. Found him. He just passed out as I was approaching him. Here, I'll 
lay this head out for you next to him face down. Now, let's get his feet in first. Good. All right, stand him up now. Coach again, help me hold him. There, I've got his helmet placed. Fernandez, seal him up. Hurry, please. I'm trying, Doctor. I can't get it closed. This seal wasn't designed to be closed by someone with these damn gloves on. Take one of your gloves off. Is that safe, Doctor? A few seconds won't do any damage. I'll help you reseal your suit after. Just be quick. Are you sure? That's an order. Now! Got it. His suit sealed. I'm activating his air. Done. I can't get the glove back on. My hand is swollen up twice as big as it was before. Help me! Uh, forget the glove. It'll never fit. I'll seal your suit at the wrist. My whole right arm is swollen and numb. And the hand... Oh my god! Just be thankful it's numb right now. Okay, let's get a move on. Kotrigan, you help me get Peters to medical, and Hernandez, you take yourself there. Run ahead of us. Hurry! Larissa! Glad you could make it down here. I owe you my life. Seems your time without air wasn't anywhere near as hard on you as mine was when you rescued me. I'm fine. Looking forward to a really big meal. I just wish I could say the same for Hernandez. What happened to her? Have a look. I don't... Oh, the hand. That's terrible. He was exposed to the vacuum for too long, and the circulation cut off by the wrist seal too. There was no choice but to amputate. Will she be okay? Oliver, except her missing right hand, will be fine. In fact, it's time to wake her now. Uh, How do you feel, Eva? Where am I? In medical. We were rescuing Peter, remember? I remember. You ordered me to take off my glove and... Oh my god, where's my hand? We had to amputate it. You, you monster. You knew this would happen when you ordered me to take the glove off and you didn't tell me. Would you have taken it off if I'd told you? You had no right. I'd grow you a new hand if we didn't have a law against growing a clone for harvest. You can take that up with the mayor if you'd like. Wow, you're incredible. It was an emergency. We had to get Peter's suit sealed. And like you said, those suits were designed to be closed up by a partner's free hands in a pressurized room. I realized you weren't going to be able to get it done with the glove on. So why couldn't you do it yourself? Take off your own glove? Then who would have been able to treat me, hmm? To perform the amputation and treat Peter's? A doctor needs his hands. So in that split second, you just decided you're more important than me and ordered me to sacrifice my hand to save yours. To save Peter's. Oh, piss off. I hope I never see you again. She'll be back when she realizes the tourniquet has to be replaced twice a day. I don't know how you can do these things, Doc. I remember that I'm working for a higher purpose, for the greater good. Sometimes that means you have to put somebody in danger. A hand here, a clone twin sister there. Someday it's all going to catch up with you, Doc. Maybe. Do you mind if I sit here, Judge Lee? Go ahead. And I'm off duty. Call me Mira. Mira. That feels awfully personal. <laughs> Not as awkward as saying your name would be. True. So, Mira, you're getting old. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Is that what you came over to say? No. I mean, uh, you're aging well better. 
You announced you're retiring in a few months. That I did. Have you thought about what you'll do after? I'll just take it easy. Spend more time with my husband and the grandkids. Read a lot. You'll find relaxation isn't anywhere near as much fun anymore when you're not using it as a break from job stress. You're saying fun isn't fun anymore when you get to do it too often. Basically, if I were you, I'd reconsider that retirement. Well, I can always get a job if I miss working, but I don't think I will. It's not the same when you're not on top of your profession anymore. There's no going back to how things were. I think you just can't stand not having power. Well, I mean, isn't that natural? You know, most of us little people have never had any power. That makes it easier, Marcus. If you've never tasted it, you can live a happy life without really knowing what you're missing. No, we can't. We, we live miserable little lives. Well, you don't ever have to think about that because we don't matter. I just wanted to take a moment to say a proper thank you to everybody who helped bring Salish home to us safely. Our mayor for organizing the effort. Our mayor's father and apprentice Tojo for finding water. Chief Flint for working out how to get us to him and get him down safely. Dr. Stone for leading the rescue team. Eva Hernandez for her brave sacrifice. Marissa Flint for keeping us in touch while we were drifting apart and so many more of you. This was a real community effort and we couldn't be more thankful. Marissa, did you get a chance to look at those signals today? I did. And? Well, it's certainly not static. It's organized information. Any idea where it's being sent? That's the odd part. There's a little drift in where it's pointing. It's not quite the same location it was yesterday. It might mean the antenna aligner is broken. Could be, but I put astronomy section on it. They're searching that part of the sky for possible signal targets. Hmm. Not to rush you or anything, Peters, but I'm wondering if you think the ship can still be ready for the launch window. Absolutely. It'll be ready in a couple weeks. I wasn't just sleeping over there. Being stranded gave me plenty of time to think through the remaining problems. And I heard ore processing is making great progress on building out the fuel cache for the tanker. Good. I'd hate to miss our chance to explore the Tau Ceti system. And I know we can't slow down enough to buy you much time. I'm only sorry I can't do the exploring myself. I know what you mean. Ah, to be young again. Look at them all, with so much to look forward to. You know what they say, youth is wasted on the young. There you are, Dad. Thought I'd let you know. I picked the other two members of your mission volunteer selection committee. Oh, who are they? Dr. Peters, because he's best suited to evaluate how psychologically prepared someone is to spend the rest of their life alone without cracking up, and to make sure our volunteers are of sound mind in understanding what they're getting into. And Astronomy Chief Lawrence, since he understands our scientific goals better than anyone. I'll get in touch with them tomorrow, and we'll start narrowing down the list. Speak of the devil. I've got a call from Lawrence now. Mayor, this is astronomy section. You're going to want to get up here and see this. Now? Is it important? To be the most important thing that ever happened to us. On my way. I'll join you. I don't want you in the way. I don't feel like arguing about it at the moment. Do as you like, Dad. Okay, Chief Lawrence, what's going on? You know communication section told us where the transmission was aimed? Yes. And that there's a slight drift? Get on with it. Well, have a look here. There. That star is moving. Asteroid, a little smaller than ours. The transmission from our ancient device is tracking it precisely. 
Is it part of Tau Ceti's system, debris disk, or its Oort cloud? That was our first thought, but it's not gravitationally bound to Tau Ceti. And I mean emphatically not bound. How fast is it moving? That's the shocker right there. Relative to Tau Ceti, it's moving at about half the speed of light. Is there any natural phenomenon that could explain that? No, but even if there were, it wouldn't be able to explain the acceleration. Well, better to call it deceleration, actually, relative to us. It's approaching us? No doubt about it. Coming up very fast, but now slowing, like they're planning to match our speed when they get here. Can you project how long until it reaches us? Already have. It'll be around 15 days. Could we outrun them? Their acceleration at the moment is 1.8 Gs, and the fastest we've managed is 0.1. No chance. Let's hope they're friendly. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 10, Rescue. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerim. Mission Specialist Salish Peters is David Loftus. Mayor Renata Matumbo is Kathleen Lee. Astronomy Chief Lawrence is James Lorenz. Jim O'Hara is Slim Sam V.O. Apprentice Tojo is Gwyneth Knight. Eva Hernandez is Lindsay White. Aniket is Yashin Naidu. Judy is Grace Trombley. Marcus Flint is Glenn Haskell. Detective Aranya Satang is Sova Rain. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerum. Chief Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. The mayor's father is Roger Arnold. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Communications Chief Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Special thanks to our Kickstarter backer, Vladi Mangente. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org, a soundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.